let's kick off our October SAT predictions with a geometry problem. It says in the figure lines M and N are parallel. If A equals 5X minus 35 and B equals 3X plus 5, what is the value of C? So you can see here we have two parallel lines, N and M, and then we have a transversal cutting through it that is line L. And it creates these three angles, A, B, and C. Now here we can see that angle A and angle B are what we call alternate interior angles. Now there's a whole proof for that, but you don't need to know the proof. You just need to know that these two angles are equivalent, right? So if we know A equals B by that theorem, then we can constitute that these expressions 5x minus 35 is going to be equivalent to 3x plus 5. So we can write this as 5x minus 35 equals 3x plus 5. All right, that's cold enough, but where do we go from here? Well, I'm trying to determine the value of c, right? And we can see the value of c is right here. Now, what's interesting is that c actually makes up a bigger angle alongside angle b. We can see that blue angle I just drew in. That is a supplementary angle equal to 180 degrees, right? When you have a transversal that cuts through a line, the two angles it creates will obviously sum up to 180 degrees. So because of that, let's just get rid of this, we know B plus C must equal 180 degrees. So what do we do? Well, let's just rearrange the equation. 180 minus B must equal C. And so now we can find what B is. B is just 180 minus, and B is 3x plus 5. 3x plus 5. You can see where I'm going with this because if we can find the value of x, we can find the numerical value of c. So down here, let's find the value of x. Let's add 35 to both sides and then subtract 3x from both sides. So we get 2x equals 40. And so x must equal 20. So if we go over to our other expression, we get 180 minus we have 20 for x, and so 3 multiplied by x, we substitute that 20, so 3 times 20 is 60, plus 5 is 65. So we're going to be subtracting this entire thing away. 180 minus 65, this is not letting me right, will be equivalent to 115 degrees in the context of this problem. And therefore, the answer to this problem is answer choice C. All right, let's move on to our next prediction. It says the density of gold is 19,320 kilograms per cubic meters. All right, let's write this as cubic meters. Uh, a given solid gold cube has a mass of 154.56 kilograms. What is the length in meters of one edge of this cube? Okay, so this is quite a tough problem. I feel like if you've taken AP chemistry, for those of you who've dealt with rate laws and those unit conversions and dimensional analysis, this one's probably a piece of cake, but let's solve this one. All right, so first, what do we know? Well, you kind of just have to know. I'm not sure if this is on the reference sheet. It probably is that density is equivalent to mass over volume, okay? So let's rearrange this equation into volume equals, so let's multiply volume on both sides and then divide both sides by our density. That's gonna be equivalent to our mass over our density, okay? So this is helpful because we're dealing with units, and so we can't just straight up plug in numbers. Except, here's what's interesting. We know our volume, right? What exactly is our volume? Well, our volume is a cube, okay? And how do you find the volume of a cube? Side times side times side, or side cubed, right? And so we just need a placeholder variable. I'm just gonna call it alpha. So that is alpha cubed, okay? Alpha, in our case, represents one edge of this cube. That's the length in meters. But alpha cubed means that alpha has a corresponding unit of meters. And so if we're cubing it, that must have the unit of meters cubed. Cool. So now we can set this equal to. So volume corresponds to this. Now, what do the other parts correspond to? Well, this top part is the mass. Well, it's given right here. 154.56 kilograms. Boom. Perfect. Now, what is under it? That is our density. And guess what? Our density is nicely given right here as well. That is 19,320 kilograms. Oops. Kilograms is very hard to write with a mouse. You'd think I'd be pretty good at it by now. 
All right. Uh, per cubic meters. Cool. So what can we do here? Actually works out super nicely for us because watch what happens. All right. If we just ignore the numbers for a second, we have meters cubed equals. Let's look at the right side specifically. We have kilograms over kilograms over meters cubed. If you divide by a complex fraction, that's the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal, right? So this is the same thing as multiplied by meters cubed over kilograms. I don't know why I wrote that as a subscript. So this is really, okay, this is kind of getting confusing. What we have up here is the same thing as kilograms multiplied by meters cubed over kilograms. And we can see that this, we would get the kilograms to cancel and we're left with meters cubed. And so what does that mean? That means we have the same units on the left and right. And so we can just literally do the division right here to get our answer. So go ahead and take out a calculator and do the division on the right side and then take the cube root of both sides and isolate and find our actual alpha value, the edge of this cube. If you do all that, you should get the final answer choice of 0 0.2, answer choice A.